Hi, it's me, Chris Pritchard. Welcome to Chris Pritchard's Cycling News Show. Transition. First up, and something that you may never have seen ever, 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 here is a picture sent in by one of our viewers, GCN presenter Chris Opie. I say he sent it in, I stole it from his Instagram account. However, look in the middle of the picture there. That's correct. The national jersey of the e-racing national champion of Great Britain, Sir Cameron Jeffers. All right, let's get straight into it. And the big news this weekend is not Love Welter. It's the fact that there's a heat wave going on just out there, just outside. It's getting warm up by the minute. So if this show is badly presented and badly edited, I don't care. I want to get outside and I want to enjoy the sunshine because I've not seen no summer yet in the UK. But other than that, these are the main stories going off today on the CPCN show. And since it's only a day away now, we may as well start with La Vuelta news. And Primoz Rodlidge has put his ring into the hat. That's not even right. He's put his hat into the ring, claiming that he is the sole leader at Jumbo Visma. I want to win and I'm going to win. The podium is a nice place, but I've already done that at the Giro. I want to fight as hard as possible. Everyone starts from zero on Saturday, and every day is a challenge and a fight. I am doing the Vuelta for the first time, but we have a really strong team, and I'm looking forward to it. Unequivocally, the team leader right there at Jumbo Visma, Primoz Rodlich, is not just going for a podium spot, he's going there to win. Now, one man that might try and stop him, I don't think he will, but he might, is Mitchelton Scott's Esteban Chavez. Over on Cycling News, they run with the headline that Chavez on the comeback trail at La Vuelta España. The Mitchelton Scott leader coy on rumours of his sterling form. The article moves on to say it looks incredibly evident that the Mitchelton Scott leader's tough second half of 2018 after falling ill in the Giro d'Italia, which saw his career put on hold for over six months, is now definitively behind him. Certainly, a stage win in the Italian Grand Tour's third week this May strongly suggested the Colombian racer is moving back on track. Chavez told the reporters on Thursday's press conference, Things were interrupted last year for reasons I couldn't control. The most important thing is to go on living the dream. Just being here in the Vuelta a España press conference with all the big names is something very special. You have to enjoy that. Now, even though the Giro and La Vuelta are both Grand Tours, it's the Tour de France that people want to win. It's the Tour de France that transforms careers. It's the Tour de France that makes your name a household name when you go back to Colombia. But honestly, I don't think he's capable of doing that. I really don't. But if he can get a good result here at La Vuelta, this could be the stepping stone he needs to really perform well next year in 2019. Nope, 2020. Sticking with La Vuelta and Richard Carapaz is officially out of the movie star team for this year's La Vuelta. La Flamme Rouge 16 yesterday posted this tweet saying, Breaking, Carapaz may not start the Vuelta 2019 because he crashed during training. The decision will be tomorrow morning. Turns out it wasn't in training. He was being a naughty boy. It looks like Carapaz was taking part in a post tour criterium that he potentially shouldn't have been and we believe that movie star had told him not to be involved in. He ended up crashing, as you can see from this picture here, and that is what's caused his withdrawal. Whether he just laid the bike down and just said, hey, listen, I, I, I'm a, I'm a, I've hurt my, ah, ooh, ah, definitely broken, just because he can't be bothered to ride for movie star at Love Welter this year, I don't know. Who cares? Who cares? I don't care. I don't care. Now, whatever the real reason was, I'm on too sure, but that's the way it stands at the minute. Carapaz is out of Love Welter because of a crash he had in a criterium he shouldn't have been doing. Lesson for you all, kids. Don't raise criteriums. They're bloody dangerous. This, this title, this, this red jersey, um, really, really does mean a lot to me. I mean, that, that, that race back in 2011 was, was incredibly special for me. It was, it was a race that I first started to believe in myself as a, as a Grand Tour contender. And um, it was the race where I had my first professional victory and um, I've, I've got some got some really special memories from from that race. It, it would have it would have been so different had had I actually won it back then. Being being able to stand on that podium in Madrid and and really soak up the feeling of, of winning my first Grand Tour and being being the first British rider to to ever win a Grand Tour that that would have been a uh, an amazing feeling. So that's Chris Froome there accepting his red jersey as the official winner 
of La Vuelta back in 2011 after Juan Jose Cobo was disqualified for uh, doping. But I've got a question for you, and this is a tweet that I saw underneath the tweet from T Minios that said, thanks to this incredible kind of performance, what a joke. And there you've got Chris Froome, and then behind him, finishing second, just behind him, just there, is Juan Jose Cobo. The guy who won overall at La Vuelta that year, uh, but also got busted for, for doping during La Vuelta. It's hard to watch that and not question it. It, it is. It is. It's hard not. How can you not? How can you not watch that and go, right, I know for a fact that that guy there who he's just beat has been done for doping. One point I want to make here is, I don't know if this just happens in cycling or, or it happens throughout. A couple of weeks ago, we saw a swimmer refuse to take to the podium after he won a bronze medal because the guy on the top step was a, was a convicted doper and he'd come back after a ban, which I think is cool. But anyway, in this interview, Chris Froome says, you know, how nice it would have been to be able to stand on the podium and be, the, be, be announced as the winner there and then at La Vuelta, but obviously he wasn't because Jose, Juan Jose Cobo was. But at no point does he say, I can't believe that guy did that. I, no one ever moans about them and says, what an absolute dick. He took that opportunity away from me. He, he is an absolute... Yeah. How dare he? No one ever really slags these, these dopers off. And I think I would love to hear Chris Room say, do you know what? What an absolute bell end. I wanted to win that. I deserved to win that. I was the clean rider. He wasn't. God damn it. And no one ever says, do you know what? Actually, I thought he was doping because I was absolutely on my limit. And he just looked as fresh as a daisy every day. And I was getting more and more tired. And he just kept getting better and better. Like, why don't riders say that? It's, it's, it's all good and well doing the whole PR thing. Oh, it's nice to win. It would have been nice to win it back there. But like, tell us what you really think about him. Massive news coming out of Zwift. We're getting into Zwift season. We're almost at Zwift season. By the way, Zwift streams start first week in September. But guess what? Brand new course coming to Zwift. And not only that, it's based on the World Championship race from this year in Harrogate. Yorkshire roads are now going to be rideable in Zwift. Maybe this is the thing I've been waiting for. Titans Grove is great. Watopia is great. Epic KOM is great. Alp de Zwift is horrendous. But now we have Yorkshire roads in Zwift. Well, not yet, but they're coming. The embargo has been lifted on the Zwift press release and we can now talk about it officially that Zwift confirmed as official supplier to the UCI 2019 Road World Championships in Yorkshire. The deal will see Zwift launch an official virtual UCI Road Championship course with a replica of the Harrogate finishing circuit in early September. So check out the screenshots here from the middle of Harrogate. This is what Harrogate is going to look like at the end of September. You've got the Zwift draft house there and that's at it from another angle. Now if you want to see what it looks like in real life, so that's what it looks like in Zwift land, and that's what it looks like in real life. Not a bad replica, a lot more street furniture in real life. Hopefully they're gonna get that sorted out. But really what I wanna know is, do you like these standalone courses? Now we saw the Giro course at the start of this year and it was just ridiculous. Not only was it a horrible time trial, but it was really, really short and didn't really make much sense for a Zwifter to go riding on it. I'm sure if you were a time trialist, you might have enjoyed it. But what do you think to these standalone world championship courses? Richmond, Innsbruck, and obviously now Harrogate. We've obviously got London Surrey Classic in there as well. But as the road race world championship courses, do you like them? Are they a good addition to, to Zwift? Or would you rather see the developers who spent all the time making Harrogate spend that time on Watopia, just making that world bigger and better? Leave them down below. Sticking with the world championships, but this time in real life, not in a virtual world, two of the favourites have been talking about their preparation for this year's Worlds. Julian Alaphilippe is looking to finish off an amazing 2019 season in a stripy jumper. In an interview with Lakeep, his coach and cousin Frank Alaphilippe has talked about his preparations coming into this year's Worlds. After the tour he was at the end of the line. At the end he put pressure on himself. He knew he wouldn't win it, but he played the game. If he hadn't cut down, it would have been difficult to make the end of the season. Unlike a lot of his rivals, Alaphilippe decided to take a decent well-earned break after the Tour de France. He rode Classica San Sebastian for a couple of hours and he also only took part in one of the post-tour criteriums. Obviously, recovery is a bit complicated and there's always doubt. After a two-week break, 
Will the condition be good in September? Julian was doubting it even before the start of the tour. He said he didn't have the same feelings as the previous year, but we saw what he gave. He's someone who needs racing to reassure himself. Now another man that's going to be challenging him all the way, or potentially, is Mathieu van der Poel. Mathieu van der Poel has scrapped plans for an altitude training camp ahead of the Road Race World Championships in Yorkshire, choosing to remain in Belgium ahead of the Tour of Britain. He will, however, replicate the effects of altitude by sleeping in a hypoxic tent, a practice which is banned in some countries, but not in Belgium. Now, I'll be honest, I do not know the science behind an altitude tent, but if you get the same effect from an altitude tent that you do training at altitude, then, well, it's a no-brainer. For me, anyway, you get to train on your home roads, you're in your own bed on a daily, well, albeit in the tent, you're in your own house and in your own bedroom, and you get to train on the roads that you know really well. Now, compare that to going up and down mountains all day just to get to and from your hotel. Doesn't sound like my idea of of fun. Plus when you look at the road race course there's no massive climbs in there. Yes there's a few but they're those short sharp steep efforts that you, you would tend to find more in Europe than you or northern Europe than you would you know in, in the Sierra Nevada in, in Spain. Hey everybody it's me Chris Pritchard out on the open road. See this here we're going to take a closer look at that in a minute but I thought I'd do Q&A out on the road today because I swear some of you think that I don't actually ride bikes, I just I just comment on bikes nowadays, so um, doing a bit of secret training, got an event lined up, tell you about it soon. So the first question is, will you be coming to Yorkshire for the World Championships and if so will you be doing a video on it? And yes, the intention is to go to Yorkshire and, and make some content about it. It'd be nice to go up there and, and potentially like film on a couple of the climbs prior to it and actually just talk about the world's um, and who my favourites are, uh, which leads me quite nicely into the second question, which is who's your favourite for the World Championships, both male and female? Now, I need to check the form guide on the women. Yeah, I don't know who who like who were the favourites for these longer, big, one-day races, especially World Championships. You know, World Championships, although not necessarily in any way, shape, or form a classic, it tends to be a a classic rider that normally comes to the fore um, mainly because of the length of it and and they're more undulating rather than pure out and out climbs there's some tough climbs and you've got to get over them but similar to you know somewhere like Milan San Remo um, you know where where my heart lies I think I answered this same question a couple of a couple of weeks ago I want Swifty to win that's what my heart's saying um, I don't think I don't think Evan Apol can do it this year I just I'd love to see him do it, but I just don't think so. Machi van der Poel, if he can bring form into it, he's kind of the favourite, isn't he? Ala Philippe, Ala Philippe might come, come good. You know, he's he's had three weeks up in the mountains in the middle of the summer. If he's recovered well and then he gets back to a good training block, potentially he could take it. Right, let's go and check this out. Now you know what my views are on this. I've spoke about this a few times, and down our country lanes, you get a lot of this, right? What I want to show you is the address that this got delivered to. Whether this, I presume it is. Look at this. Look at this. Responsible delivery to Kingsmill Hospital. That's that's the main hospital down in Mansfield. Look at that. So whoever's working for Kingsmill is uh, is. In fact, I'm going to tweet this. Next question. Name one pro Caribbean cyclist. My first thought is Jusane Phillips legend also i mean listen i went to two commonwealth games what of it but my point being <laughs> there's a lot of caribbean uh, countries that go to the commonwealth games so i got to know quite a few so darren matthews from barbados he's a good lad don't know if he's actually pro or not but quality rider next question eight inch thin one or six inch fat one now i don't know whether that's on me or in me um if it's the latter, neither. Not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just not for me. I would have to say... Listen, it's not about the length, is it? It's not. Everybody knows it. The only time it's about the length is when you're stood in the urinal and there's a man checking you out. If you're going to use it for its intended purpose, I'd definitely... I'd go for something a little wider than, than longer. Definitely. Next question. Have you any pointers 
for a criterium I'm doing on Saturday. 1.1 mile loop with 10 corners. Smiley, slightly worried, sweaty emoji. Uh, yes, get to the front. Um, if you think about it, if you're squeezing 10 corners into a criterium circuit of only 1.1 mile, you're kind of thinking these corners are going to be really tight, really technical. They're not going to be fast and flowing. So if you want to stand any chance of of being up there, you've got to commit to the first 10, 15, potentially 20 minutes of that crit to be at the front because what's going to happen, as you probably already know, like everybody that races crits knows, first person goes into the, the tight, let's call it a left hander, first person goes in and then you get the accordion effect, everybody bunches up, everybody squeezes on the brakes, the first guy then rolls through nice and easy, second guy a little slower, third guy even slower, so on and so forth. So then you get this accordion effect of all coming in, stopping, and then it all stretching out again. And that's fine for maybe two laps, but eventually, with all that to and fro in, you're not gonna be able to keep a consistent power down. Get to the front, and you can dictate how fast you go through the turns. You can flow through them and slowly accelerate where everyone else is just burning matches, just trying to accelerate from a, from a dead stop, like, bop, full gas just trying to keep with you so get to the front first two don't worry about being you know man one right at the front pushing the wind it's better to push a little bit of wind down the straights knowing that you're going to get into the corners and have an easier time through the corners accelerate out of it faster than you would if you were just in the wheels so my point is get to the front don't crash win the race thanks for watching everybody just want to take this opportunity to say a huge massive thank you to everybody who subscribed left messages, done, done all the stuff that I ask on a daily basis. Don't forget merch if you want to be part of the Mug Club, hashtag Mug Club. Victor and Jesper will be bringing you all the stage news tomorrow night. I'll be bringing you the regular news. And then on Sunday, we've got a bonus video that we just... You know what we're doing here. We're just testing things out. We're just trying to bring you the best content we can. And we feel in Jesper and Victor that they are bringing something very special to the table on Sunday. So make sure you stick around to check that out. So yeah, do all that stuff. And um, I'll see you tomorrow.